Simon Yates is about to face a pivotal moment of his career in 2024. After what happened last year, he's got some unfinished business with the biggest of races, the Tour de France, and is fully focused on continuous improvement as he begins the new season. And this time, there's one special thing on his menu, the Tour de France podium. But can Simon Yates actually reach his goal? And how hard will that be with all the talent set to participate in this year's tour? See, the 31-year-old Englishman is making a push for the Tour de France podium, the main focus of his 2024 season. However, as the GC King at Jaco Alula, he faces additional goals and pressure throughout the season. Simon finished fourth in the 2023 Tour, around a minute and a half behind his brother Adam. And that's exactly why he's motivated to take it a step higher. He said, it keeps me hungry and I want to go back to go even better. I was so close last year. It was a great success. I did a great ride, no miscues. I was so close to being even better. Twice second in stages and close to the podium, it could have been an even bigger success. The thing that's bothering him the most, though, is that he was so close, yet still so far. And what's even worse, his twin brother from the UAE team Emirates was the one who beat him to the podium. In the first stage, the two brothers took the top two spots, and later in the tour, they competed for the final podium position. Adam then returned the favour by assisting his brother in catching up to a leading group, assuring Simon would end the race in fourth place. And that was truly beautiful. Despite their rivalry on the bike, there wasn't any loss of brotherly love. At the tour down under, Simon admitted, It's always nice racing with and against him, and it's always hard because I know his capabilities. Inside the peloton, you see guys doing favours for other teams on occasions, and last year it was nice to do that with my brother. Yates is starting the 2024 season as one of the active winners of Grand Tours in the peloton. He won the Vuelta a España in 2018 and finished third at the Giro d'Italia in 2021. But despite his long-time love affair with the Giro, Simon feels like the tour is calling his name. Plus, he's also aware of what it means to sponsors and exposure. That's why he said, I love racing the Giro. It's a bit of a show and a circus at the tour, but the Giro is real racing. In that regard, it's hard not to go back to the Giro. I love racing there, but the tour is the tour. It's the pinnacle of the sport. I was so close to being on the podium, I am motivated to go back and be better. But despite all that, Yates does admit that he feels a bit outgunned when looking ahead of the tour. After all, it's going to be a rematch with super teams such as the UAE Team Emirates and Vismalis A Bike. And we can't forget to mention Ineos Grenadiers, Bora Hansgrohe with their Primoz Roglic project and Sudel Quickstep with Remco Evenepoel. He made it clear that racing against them is very hard by saying, I want to try to take it to these super teams if I can, but it's very difficult to pull it off. A lot of things have to fall into place for that to happen. Yates, who became a professional cyclist in 2014, mentioned that the top teams are not only winning the Grand Tours, but also dominating many other races in the World Tour and European calendars. So nowadays, winning isn't hard only at the Grand Tours, but at every single race. He said, not just at the big races, even the small races, these super teams can win stages, podium and win the overall. It's getting harder and harder to be competitive in those races and to give opportunities to younger guys. When I was younger, I had chances in these smaller races to learn. But when you come to these smaller races with four or five riders at the front, it becomes harder and harder. However, on the flip side of things, being the underdog gives Simon some extra motivation since he's aware that he's got both the skills and the engine to pull off the unthinkable. And the fact that he came so close to the podium last year motivates him even more. When asked about the underdog status, Simon said, I am still hungry and I am relatively old now. I have been on this team for 10 years. If I managed to get a podium at the tour, I would have podiumed in every Grand Tour. It's really motivating to try to do that. Not many riders have done that. I only had two bad days in the tour last year and I managed them well when it did happen. It's really about trying to improve and keep going with what I was doing there, and hopefully I can go one better. See, the pressure has already begun for Simon this season. Everyone was expecting him to deliver a big result at the Alula Tour, the five-day race set in the dramatic desert of Saudi Arabia. And there was some extra pressure on him because Alula, the promotional agency behind the region, is also one of the team's title sponsors. But as you know by now, Simon Yates managed to win the Alula Tour with a sprint on the final hilltop finish, snatching the overall victory 
from Finn Fisher Black. Yates was three seconds behind Finn Fisher Black in the overall standings as they approached the finish line, but Yates earned a 10 second time bonus by winning the stage. Although Fisher Black finished third in the sprint and got a four second bonus, he remained three seconds behind Yates in the overall standings. After the race, Simon admitted, I was a bit nervous. I thought Finn was second on the stage and so doing some quick maths, I wasn't sure I'd won it, but it's a job well done. It's a very important race for us. Alula is an important partner of ours, so it's fantastic to pull it off. I tried to shake them on the climb, but I didn't have the legs. But I won the sprint to get the stage, and so I was pretty happy. It's been a good early part of the year. My form is pretty good. I've still got work to do, but the big goals are the summer. Yates made the initial move to attack on the steep climb with 10 kilometers left in the race, following the closure of two earlier breakaways on the valley roads. He seemed to be in good shape, but surprisingly, he couldn't manage to break away from the pack and had to fight for the victory in the last metres of the race. At the Alula Tour, Simon was in position to take the win against a field mostly packed with sprinters. He also admitted that he doesn't really like the race, and the pressure is probably one of the main reasons. It's not the greatest race for me, but it's like the TDU. If you play your cards right, you can sway it in the right direction. We were going with a heavy sprint lineup, so I didn't have much support. There was only one stage that was really hard, so I knew I had to work it out. So after the sponsor commitments at the Australian Tour and the Alula Tour, Yates is coming back to Europe where he'll get quote unquote stuck into some hard racing at some familiar races like the Tirreno Adriatico, the Tour of the Basque Country, and the Criterium du Dauphiné. What's important though, is that Simon still and always wants to achieve more. He said, I am still hungry to do more, to improve myself and to do better. I just think the sport is changing. There is so much innovation. When I turned pro, no one wore a skin suit. Nutrition was not a thing and we raced on rim brakes. It's a completely different sport. I turned pro when I was 21. Now guys turn pro at 17. You have to keep adapting and keep learning and innovating. And that's what we're trying to do here. So the main rule is keep moving or get left behind. And that will always be the most important rule of the peloton. But the most important thing is that Simon thinks that despite his age and all the possible setbacks, he can still achieve whatever he wants. He said, I mean, last year were my best numbers I ever did. I don't know if I can keep improving. I hope so. And I'm still motivated. I'm getting older now. Just at the Tour Down Under, for some reason, I checked the start list and I was second oldest in the team. And it didn't really register yet that I was one of the veterans of the team. But I still feel young, motivated to do better and to improve myself and go after the highest of heights. We'll see if I can do that. But with his current mentality and hunger, Simon will undoubtedly be a serious contender at the 2024 Tour de France. There might be some bigger superstars and team leaders than he is racing this year as well, but that doesn't mean an underdog can't surprise the entire cycling world with an unexpected result.